Yo guys, Punk Rowe another video. Probably one of the most important aspects of the game in vanilla is the consumable system. As WoW has progressed throughout the years, consumables have become less and less integral and much less interesting to be honest. Consumables nowadays give you a small main stat increase on a flask or a secondary stat buff from an on-use potion on a 2 minute cooldown. In classic, things were way different. There's a potion or consumable item for every situation. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the most OP ones that I could think of off the top of my head. This video won't cover all the more generic, powerful consumables like Flask of Supreme Power, Mongoose Elixir, Greater Firepower, I mean that stuff's boring, everyone knows what it is. It's going to be more focused on unique and interestingly powerful consumables instead. I can see all the comments already, so here's a little disclaimer. Let's get into it. Alright, here we got Limited Invulnerability Potion. This is one of the most useful potions in the game for mages and warlocks in particular. So if we read the tooltip for this potion, it states, Imbiber, wait, what? What the hell's an imbiber? All right, so it's actually a French word. It's imbibé. And so it says here in English, one who imbibes, who drinks, especially alcoholic beverages. Anyhow, so it says, imbiber is immune to physical attacks for the next six seconds. So the most common use for this type of potion is for mages who will basically just throw their body into the front line of enemies, pop the potion as a pseudo blessing of protection, and just cone of cold, arcane explosion spam, blast wave, while being completely immune to all physical damage. When I used to raid on my mage on a private server, uh, I always had at least 10 of these in my bags. I mean, for example, on Nefarian, during the last 20% of the fight, he summons or he resurrects a bunch of reanimated skeletons that charge the raid from the backside. And the best way to deal with those uh, reanimated skeletons is basically for all the mages to pop limited and vulnerability, the warlocks to pop it as well, and just, you know, go go to town on them, clearing them out with uh, mage instant cast AoEs, uh, warlocks just using Hellfire. This potion is obviously super useful in PvP as well. 40 versus 40 world PvP scenarios outside of a raid or in front of a world boss or a Terran mill, crossroads, you name it. Mages can just charge in and pop this pot, you know, blast entire raid group straight to the grave. All right, so next we got oil of immolation. If you watch my vanilla tanking guide, I covered this item as well as a couple others that I'm gonna be mentioning here going forward. But uh, this is one of the most useful consumables for tanks in vanilla. As most of you know, warrior tanks basically have no effective measure to tank more than two, three mobs without, you know, tabbing throughout each target and pinging one by one by one by one by one, like super micro intensive. However, there's many consumables that can solve this problem. Oil of Immolation is one of the main ones. This potion has an on-use effect which does 50 fire damage to all enemies within a 5 yard radius around the caster every 3 seconds for 15 seconds. So it essentially creates a fire aura around said target and takes on an interval to all enemies around within a close proximity or melee range. It's essentially a ghetto consecration for warriors. The best part about it is that it doesn't share cooldown with other potions and it doesn't really have a cooldown of itself. It's just got this sort of like buffer cooldown. It's like two seconds or something. It's a little recharge time. So essentially you can have a full bag of these, like 50, 60 of them. And theoretically, you could be surrounding your tank with a fire aura for the entirety of each AOE pull within whatever dungeon or raid you're doing. Like constantly just have it going. If you struggle with multiple targets as a warrior tanking in vanilla, these kinds of consumables are the equalizer, which will put you on the path to success. Okay, so these next few consumables are actually all going to be within the same scope of Oil of Immolation. They're all consumables which can be used on a tank and even other classes to compensate for lack of AoE. So the next one is Dragon Breath Chili. And this one's probably one of my favorite consumables in the game. It makes me super sad that I'm actually going to be playing Hunter this time around and I won't be able to use this every single raid. But uh, this consumable is actually super easy to get to. It's crafted from cooking with really, really simple mats. So I covered this in my tank guide, but I'll just do it again. Dragon Breath Chili is an on-use buff that lasts 10 minutes on your character, and it occasionally will belch flame at enemies struck by your physical attack. So you'll hit one enemy and it'll actually belch flame in front of you in a cone that'll hit everything in front of you. This consumable is great for tanks, for AoE tanking scenarios, rogues for AoE and just to have extra on hit uh, magic damage to pair with your poisons. Well you have slice and dice up so you're getting more procs. You have uh, rep paladins, fury warriors, I mean you name it. Melee is just an on hit effect that'll give you a slight DPS increase. And I mean you're literally breathing fire. It's It doesn't get any better than that right guys. The next ones in line with these kinds of consumables are Crystal Spire and Crystal Charge. 
I'm sure most of you guys remember that quest in Ongoro Crater where you have to run around collecting all those different colored crystals. So you have the red crystals, the blue crystals, the yellow crystals, and the green crystals. Well, after completing this quest, you're still able to pick up those crystals and you can hand them in for pretty unique buffs. So the first one is Crystal Charge. You get six of these per quest hand in. They basically act like grenades do in the same sort of fashion, but without the stun and without the casting time that a grenade has. So it's just an instant pop burst in an area. Three, uh, three yard area. The next one is Crystal Spire, which is a buff that you apply on yourself, which acts as a thorns dealing 12 damage to each attacker when struck. So Crystal Spire says, use a crystal shield surrounds a friendly target doing 12 damage to anyone who hits him. Hmm, seems a bit gender specific. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. So if we combine all of these consumables together, AOE tanking becomes a breeze, even as a warrior. What I'm about to show you, you're either going to already know and have seen similar things before, or I'm about to completely blow your mind. Alright, so we've got a warrior here, pop crystal spire, thorns, dragon's breath chili, and retribution aura, which are all super easy buffs to get, either from your teammates or simple consumables that are really not a pain at all to get. Then look, look and see what happens once we pull a ton of mobs here. Just look at this. Watch as things start proccing. It's just non-stop. And this is also including Force Reactive Disc, which I'll put on the screen here. It's a shield that you make from engineering and it's pretty much a must have. Oh, and popping oil of immolation here. That's the fire sort of pulse that you're seeing around. And the Dragon, Dragon's Breath Chili, unfortunately, I don't think procs, but here you can just see the potential of this. It's absolutely insane. Ever heard this before? Hey, yo, mate. What are your tanks? Get a wee tank, mate. Wrong. All right, so the next consumable that I've already mentioned many, many times in my previous videos is free action potion, or commonly referred to as the fat potion. A three letter word that I'm sure a lot of us World of Warcraft nerds have become very accustomed to, if you know what I mean. So free action potion is a straight up on use buff that makes you immune to roots, stuns, and slows. So if you're a warrior that's struggling with frost mages, kiting you to hell and back, no worries, just fap your load all over that mage, giving him the spicy two-hander straight to the face. It's also got its uses in PvE, where bosses have mechanics like War Stomp or whatever uh, that'll stun everyone within a melee range. During speed clears, you could have your entire melee group pop a free action potion each and just be completely immune to the stun and nuke straight through it and save as much time as you can by doing that. Next on the list, we got Swiftness of Zanza. This is a sort of flask style potion. It doesn't persist through death like a flask does, but it does last two hours. It's a flat 20% movement speed buff. You get this from the Zandalari Island in Stranglethorn Vale when Zul'Gurub comes out. You need Revered with the Zandalari tribe in order to access the quest that gives you this flask or this potion. It costs one Zandalari honor token, which is what you receive when you hand in one of those bijou or coin quests from, uh, from Zul'Gurub. And the quest is repeatable, so you can keep restocking on this potion over and over again. This potion is really great for flag carrying in Warsong Gulch with a strong pre-made. Mages are really good flag carriers to begin with, but with the increased movement speed from this potion, they become even better. And druids obviously are the best flag carriers, and this just puts them completely over the top. I really like this potion on a hunter as well. It allows you to keep near that 40 yard distance range really well while kiting warriors and maybe other, other uh, classes, but specifically warriors because you stay out of their charge range entirely and you can just keep kiting them and keep taking them down slowly um and even against casters or like warlocks and whatever you can stay in that max range where you're attacking them but they're not in range to put dots on you or something like that uh, it's a simple one but it's really useful it's also great for kiting in pve if you're playing a hunter and you know you'll be kiting ads during a certain portion of the raid which happens a lot having this pot on you to facilitate things is really nice it's basically like a permanent aspect of the cheetah without a daze on hit okay so the next one is restorative potion i feel like this one in particular has less notoriety in the vanilla community than some of the other ones that i've mentioned but despite that fact I still feel like it's pretty much on equal footing in terms of its impact on PvP specifically. Restorative Potion is an on-use buff that removes one magic, curse, poison, or disease effect on you every 5 seconds for 30 seconds on a 2 minute cooldown. You can premeditatively pop this potion before you get CC'd to avoid polymorph, fear, blind, you name it. I also really like using this potion against warlocks, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's just going to constantly dispel curses and magic dots off of you during the fight against that warlock. I've seen this used in PvE as well in Vanilla, there's lots of boss encounters um, where there's like a raid-wide debuff that gets applied to everyone in the raid, so having this potion handy 
sometimes can be super useful. But in general, its strength is definitely in PvP, so you can personally avoid CC without relying on a dispel from a teammate. Uh, or running out of line of sight to avoid the CC. Overall, just a really strong pot. Allows you to get out of CC, pretty much nothing else needs to be said. This next one is by far one of my favorites. It's simple, but it's just so useful. And those who prioritize always being stacked on this consumable will always have an inherent advantage over their cohorts in a raid group. It's called Demonic Rune or Dark Rune. So let's read the tooltip here. Demonic Rune is an on use that restores 900 to 1500 mana at the cost of 600 to 1000 life. It's bind on pickup and drops off demons across the world. Dark Rune has the same on use. It's BOE, however, so you can sell it on the auction house and it drops off a bunch of mobs and scholomans. This item essentially acts like a really powerful life tap in a certain way, but on a two minute cooldown and off global cooldown as well. It shares a cooldown timer with health stones and mana gems, but is much more powerful than mana gems. So on long mana intensive fights, it'll keep you rolling on mana much better than a mana gem could. It also doesn't share cooldown with mana pots, so you can keep popping pots and runes throughout the entire fight, keeping your mana replenished as best as possible. There's a really interesting little strategy that I used to use with these. I'll explain it here with a little theory crafting session. So if you're a troll, you have this racial called Berserking, which gives you a 10% attack speed increase and casting speed increase. But it, it, it says in the tooltip that it'll increase that uh, attack speed increase to 30% if you're badly hurt. You get the full effect, so the 30%, if you're below 40% HP. All right, so let's see it in action. First, the first clip, we're gonna see just normal frost bolts, 2.5 second speed. It's a pretty fast cast, so you know it, it feels pretty decent, but it's not exactly what we're looking for, right? This next clip over here, we're gonna pop Berserking. It's 10% increased buff because we're close to full HP. Relatively fast, feels a lot better, right? Big DPS increase, but again, not quite what we're looking for. This last one, however, look, we're around 50% HP, gonna pop Demonic Rune to drop below 40 for the increased 30% uh, casting speed, pop all the cooldowns, and just blast one after another. Look how fast this cast speed is. Super, super in big increase in DPS. So this is the type of stuff that's gonna allow you to burst really, really hard in the opening window and separate yourself from the other DPS in your raid group. And also I'm showing this on a mage, but you can do this on pretty much any DPS class. I mean, you don't even have to have mana to pop a demonic rune. So theoretically, if you're a troll warrior, you could use this. I wouldn't suggest going a troll warrior at all, but I mean, if you are, you can do this. Okay, so this is the last one that I'm gonna cover for this video, and it's called Goblin Sapper Charge. It's one of the most useful consumables in both PvE and PvP. Let's read the tooltip. It's an on use that explodes when triggered, dealing 450 to 750 fire damage to all nearby enemies and dealing 375 to 625 damage to you. It's essentially a blast wave, without the slow of course. A massive circular fire blast around your character that scorches all enemies in a pretty large radius around you. 450 to 750 damage is really significant in vanilla standards, even in PvP. So you'll see a lot of these in PvP. People tend to rotate them in their rotation. So as a rogue, for example, you can full combo during a stun lock and maybe you're missing like a couple hundred damage to kill off the target like right at the end before the stun's about to wear off. But no problem, you just sap recharge and compensate for that and use it as an execute uh, when you're out of energy at the end just to finish the target. Obviously, you can see how this is great for tanking for AoE pulls as well. And in general, guilds who plan on speed clearing tend to require most melee to be engineers in order to stack as many of these as possible. You can imagine how insane this is if you have 30 to 40 people in one raid all letting off their sapper blast at once. So let's say each sapper blast is doing around 550 damage on average. Multiply that by 30 or 40, it comes out to 16,500 damage to 22,000 damage per target. So each target is getting hit by, by that much damage if they all go off at once. In a 40 versus 40 world PvP scenario, I showed it earlier during the limited vulnerability potion portion of the video, but look at what happens to a massive raid group when another raid group charges in on them while they're stacking for buffs and all they all lit off their sappers at once. I mean, it completely obliterated the entire raid group almost instantaneously. In PvE, you can pretty much do the same thing, but to mobs in the dungeon or raid. So in this clip, you'll see this guild over here is uh, speed clearing Blackwing Lair and they all charge the orb protectors on Razor Gore and boom, all the sappers go off pretty much at the same time and just completely clear out all of those elite mobs in like basically a second. Goblin Sapper Charge OP. All right, so as you guys can see, consumables are really interesting in vanilla. The modern consumable system in retail is a mere shadow of what it used to be. Alchemy used to feel like it had such depth to it. 
you were a mystical chemist making all kinds of sublime concoctions. Nowadays, in retail, you basically make the same two pots as everybody else, and the pots are just minor stat buffs, you don't really feel them, or use any consumables in a tactical manner at all. There's so much life in classic alchemy and engineering, it makes the game so much more fun. Anyways, I'm sure you guys get it, so with that said, as usual, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe for more content like this, you know the drill soldiers. Thanks for watching, have a good one, I'm out, peace. I know when to pay the front line, take the don'ts. He's coming out again for a new point. Get your bets down, ladies and gentlemen. Four fours to point, mark four. Ace, two, scrap, one, 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 four. Ace, two, ace, ace, two, scrap, scrap, one, four. Scrap, one, four. Who wants the, wants the hard four?